Welcome, welcome to Martini Live. Uh, two things. It's summertime now here in Virginia. It feels like it's up in the 80s. And I'm wearing my uncle's Tory Richards shirts. He left me 500 martini glasses and um, ordained me a martini priest and left me his robes, which were these uh, Tory Richards shirts he used to buy in Sarasota. And uh, <clears throat> I remember going with him when we visit, and he'd go out to this little shop in Sarasota and uh, pick out another Tory Richards shirt, and they cost 70 some dollars. I mean, he never, and they were always different. Uh, but now, you know, he's he, uh, has been dead a couple of years, and the shirts were old after he'd stopped buying them after he had his stroke for about five years. So the shirts are, I don't know, five, six, seven, ten, fifteen years old. <laughs> and uh, But they were very well made, and they hold up, even though the collars are getting frayed. And I have to iron them, and I enjoy that. There's something satisfying about ironing cotton shirts, and I put a little starch on the sleeve and the lapel so they don't fade and everything. So it's summertime. And also, um, a lady before uh, on my Facebook uh, comments, uh, my, my Zen uh, live comment, or my Martini live comment, somebody said, uh, uh, make mine uh, shaken and not stirred. Well, I don't know, the Martini priest told me and his, when he ordained me, he says, do not bruise the gin, just stir the gin. And a martini twist, uh, a nice gin, uh, and uh, he used to say just a whiff of vermouth. Well, I like it about uh, four to one or something like that. So I use a little vermouth like that. And, uh, and I thought I would put a lemon twist in it to remember him because uh, I started, uh, well, I, I started a new religion and use an olive. <laughs> so I thought I would go back and, and, uh, and, and uh, re recreate, the, do the uh, uncorrupted Eucharist, you know, because uh, this is my body, this is my blood, so don't bruise the, don't bruise the gin, he would say. I wanted to read, uh, excuse me, I wanted to read you something. I've been writing, uh, House Builder, this poem has been on my mind today, and I wanted to read it. This was the Buddha's, uh, first thing he said, at least this is recorded, I mean, everything that's about the Buddha is metaphor or legend. Nobody was there um, taking notes. And everything he said, he taught for 45 years, was memorized. And at that time, in an oral tradition, uh, they had fantastic memories. I mean, they could, they, they didn't, there was no right, they would memorize the talks and uh, chant them. And they, that's why the sutras, uh, the Buddha sutras are so compressed. Uh, you kind of like to have to, they're kind of like compressed dried food and you have to pour some water of interpretation on them to make them bloom out so you can understand them uh, and apply them to your everyday life. So they're very compressed, so they could be memorized and passed on. But the one thing he said when he uh, awakened was, thereupon he spoke these words of victory. So let me read these words of victory to you. And they say, seeking but not finding the house builder, I hurry through the round of many births. Painful is birth ever and again. O oh, house builder, you have been seen. You shall not build a house again. Your rafters have been broken up. Your ridge pole, your ridge pole is demolished too. My mind has now attained the unformed nirvana and reached the end of any sort of craving. Isn't that beautiful? Now that, we think that, oh, the Buddha, the Buddha did that, isn't that nice? You know? But no, this is, this is an application. This, this, is a, this is a tool, this is a wisdom that we must apply to our own lives. So we have to understand what the house builder is, uh, 
what this round of many births is, what this uh, unformed nirvana is, and what is this craving? You know, so, so this sounds like, you know, all this is, is philosophy or the religion or psychology or something about somebody else, you see. But it's really about me. So I need to understand. So this is why metaphor, these are metaphorical in that it's pointing to the Buddha did it, but the other finger is pointing at you. So you can do it too. You can awake with this, these words of victory. You can work with these words and say, I hurried through the rounds of many births. Now what does that mean? Now the longer you live, now first of all, stop letting the finger point to reincarnation. Now it can point there if you want to, but that's not, that doesn't apply to you. Who cares how many reincarnations the Buddha had? And who, and it doesn't matter whether you believe in reincarnation or not. It has nothing to do with you, whether you believe in it or not. It doesn't make you any happier or sadder, you see. It's an idea. But what he's pointing to, and if you've lived a few years, you can look back at the houses you have built and that have fallen down, ideas that crashed, relationships that fell, dreams that were dashed, all houses, all built on the desire to be better than you are, all built on the desire to have something more than what you've got, all built on craving, craving to become, craving to become something, craving to become somebody. I know my whole life is littered with houses that have been destroyed by time, houses built palaces for me to live in where I would be somebody. Palaces built where I would be successful and respected. Palaces built where I could be king and control my world. You see, all palaces, all built by the house builder. Now the house builder works, I just wrote this on my pet website, my uh, Facebook, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wrote this as I spoke about the house builder from my center, not as an it, not as somebody else's, not as an it, but as I. And the house builder builds its house during the night. And now this is this is an opposite. This flips it a little bit. The house of pain. All right, so there's two houses. There's a house in the future that I'm building to live in where I'll be happy and everything will be like roses, you see. And then there's a house of pain that I'm deconstructing during the day through self-help, through more meditation, yoga, uh, disciplines, uh, going to church, religion, doing right, the belief, being good. All these things I do during the day to get out of the house of pain built at night. So you wake up in the morning and you're back where you were. So the house builder builds this house of pain during the night and we deconstruct it during the day. And we wake up and it's, we're right back where we were. This is the myth of Sisyphus, pushing the rock up the hill, mountain, only to have it fall back. I used this metaphor the other night when I talked about my three years in a meat truck. I would go in in the morning and my meat truck would be full of meat and I would spend the day emptying my truck and I would go home so light and happy and I would get up in the morning and my truck would be full again. And this is the myth of Penelope in the Odysseus when she was trying to hold off the suitors so she she wove during the day and she said, well, you will be able to, uh, I will select you, marry one of you uh, when my knitting, my shawl is done. So she would knit during the day and at night she would unravel it. And in the life of Pi, the carnivorous island, 
He left it because the carnivorous island, what it gave during the day, it took away at night. And so this is the, 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 this, this is the life in the world. This is the life of, and so we, the house builder builds a house where we can get away from this house of pain that, uh, that we remove during the day and it fills up again at night, you see. So these, I'm trying painting a picture of the two house builders. Uh, one is my craving to be free of pain, and the other one is building the house of pain, you see. So these, uh, I just kind of like bring these two together. So what, what frees us from this house builder? It's seeing. This, the, the best little metaphor is for the child who says, whose mother says, did you take the cookie? No, I didn't take the cookie. And then one night, she goes in and flips on the kitchen light, and there he is with his hand in the cookie jar, caught in the light. That's how you have to catch the house builder. Both of them. The house builder that deconstructs your pain and the house builder that builds a place in the future where you'll have no pain. Both is the same house builder. And we have to catch it in the light. We have to catch the house builder with his hand on the cookie. You see, <laughs> looking back and say, who built the house? Oh my God, I did it. Or the world did it. Or bad fortune built it. Or fate. Or I'm a victim. You see, or, you know, circumstance. Or it's my destiny. It's in my genes. All of this stuff, you see. Blaming it on something external. Blaming it on the world. Somebody, somebody else built the house, you know. Or oh, why can't I get rid of the pain? All this complaining, all this victimizing, all of this refusing to see that it's our hand with the hammer and the nails are in me. Right? Who, who puts us on the cross? Nobody except yourself. Nail by nail. And as long as we blame others, the longer we will hang there. Maybe we get a few moments of resurrection, but the cross always comes back. <laughs> I thought I was off of this thing. Oh, <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> but isn't it funny? <laughs> and that's what happens when you see the house builder. When you see the house builder, you just laugh. You just laugh. Remember the movie, The Fiddler on the Roof? You know that great musical? Uh, that's why the Jews are such great comics. They know who the house builder is. They have this ironic sense. The house builder is ironic. This whole idea of trying to build a house during the day that falls apart at night or, or tearing it down at night and it rebuilds during the, <laughs> or taking it down during the day and it rebuilds at night. This whole theme of lose, lose. No matter what you do, you lose, you know. That's ironic. The only way out of that is to laugh. The only way out of that is to see the irony of life, to see the utter absurdity of life, to see the utter joke of it all. You see, when you see the utter joke of it all, you laugh. And when you laugh, you see the house builder. And the house builder cannot stand the light of laughter. He cannot stand to be laughed at. He cannot stand joy in the face of his pain. You see, he cannot tolerate that. And he disappears. Okay, I'll see you in the morning.